Right, I think it's time to open him up to see that he's a predator on the inside as well as in the out. Let's just get down the middle here. Pop the bits inside. So the skin, actually, even though it's such a tiny hatchling, the skin is still very, very thick. What we found in our um, monitor lizard decomposition was that reptile skin has something called beta carotene in, which um, really struggles to decompose. And there are reports of crocodile skin lasting for years in the wild on rotting carcasses. Oh, it's a thing of beauty, <laughs> believe it or not. So just here, if we can see it on the macro camera, is um, a sort of ribbed pipe, which is the um, trachea, which is your kind of breathing tube that goes down to your lungs. And just under here, that little dark red bit there is our croc's heart. And then this big old liver around the outside. And then in the midst of all this connective tissue are the lungs. And crocodile lungs are brilliant. They can actually move their lungs around inside their body cavity to effectively change the angle of their body in the water. So if they're approaching their prey, they don't want to sort of have to use their tail or their legs, which might give the game away. So instead, they move their lungs around inside their body. And if they bring their lungs closer to their head, then they'll start to tilt up. Closer to their tail, they'll start to go down and dive. Side to side, they can roll just like an aeroplane. And using their lungs, they can get right into the right position for those massive back legs and that huge tail to come into the fore and take out their prey. I think it's so cool. So what I'm gonna try and do to just see these lungs in action it's just cut a little bit higher up and actually open up the trachea. Okie dokie, how's that for an air hole? So I've just uh, opened up the trachea here and I've got a very narrow pipe and I'm going to blow into the croc's lungs for the first time since it did, just so that we can show you just how those lungs expand. Thread the needle. So you can see they're actually relatively big for the croc size. He's using the same muscles we do to inflate his lungs, our intercostals, the ones between our ribs, and the diaphragm, just beneath our lungs. But he can use them in such a way, in such an extreme way, that he can pull them to one side of his body cavity or another, up and down. Fantastic. So we've had a cool look at its lungs, but next I want to travel a little bit further up into its mouth. So their tongue, when they're catching their prey, actually acts as a bit of a flap at the back of their mouth to block off their esophagus and their windpipe so they don't drown in the water. And that's why they say that if you're ever caught by a croc yourself, you should actually try and put your hand down its mouth to open up that flap, and then it's likely to let you go. So this is where our esophagus and windpipe will be coming down. And just around here, you can see we've actually got quite a lot of muscle tissue. That's the back of that tongue, and that would come up and just seal them both off completely when it's got prey inside its mouth. It's very, very cool. So there we have it. Even though this hatchling is only about 25 centimetres long, it's just as well adapted to be a fantastic predator as its parents. For more amazing crocodile science, do check out our slow-mo of an American alligator death roll. And if you haven't already, do subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Earth Unplugged. So it might look pretty brutal, but uh, this is basically exactly what they're getting in the wild. And what they'll do is they'll latch on with those really powerful jaws and then give it a death roll. and just spin and tear off hunks of flesh. It's... This is Zoo La La, the big alligator move. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Hang on, here we go. Yeah, crocodile midwife. Oh, I'm shaking. How's that so you can see his nose just there. So, oh, oh and this is his tail because they're very big from, in such a tiny egglet. So this is his tail. <laughs>